What I've opened up here in Stata is a data set I created in a previous tutorial, and that is students2.dta. You'll see here in, by the window in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, uh, indicates which variables are in this data set, name, sex, age, exam 1, and exam 2, but there's no other information associated with those variables. Just to give you a quick little look at what the data look like, I'm going to click on the Data Editor Browse button, and I'll bring this data set down into our screen view here, so you can see it. I'll size it for us. And right there we see are the data that we've got. Uh, the uh, variable sex, age, exam 1 and exam 2 are numer numeric, and the name is in uh, a string or a character variable. Let me go ahead and close that. But I've got no information associated with the data set other than just the name for each variable. What we'd like to do ideally is to have additional information stored along with the data set so we know exactly what name, sex, age, exam 1, and exam 2, and so on actually refer to. What we're going to do here, first of all, is create more descriptive labels for each variable name by using the label command in Stata. So what I'll do is click down in the command window type in label, that's going to be the command we'll be using, label variable, there are several different aspects of the label command, but we'll use the label command to label a variable. Now I'll type in the variable name I want to add a label to, so let's take the first one, name, and then space, and now what I'm going to do is have a double quotation, open up a double quotation, and I'll put in student last name and then close that in a double quotation. Hit enter. Now you see there, going back up to the variable list in the upper right hand corner of our screen, you can now see the label student last name is now indicated for that variable name. We can do the same thing again. Again, I'll type in, whoops, I'll type in label, variable, and now let's change the label or add a label to the variable sex. So I'll type in the variable name sex. And the labels always go in double quotation marks for a variable. So I'll put student sex. Close double quotation and hit return. And now we see under label, we see the student sex associated with the variable sex in this data set. Let's also create variable labels for the other variables in the data set. And this time I'm going to shorten the label command. Instead of typing out label variable, I'm just going to type out label var. I can shorten this subcommand to just three characters. And I think given how long sometimes your label commands can be, you know, the, the less you have to type, the better some cases. So label var. Now I will label the variable age and the label I'm going to give it is age and I'll put in parentheses in years that way I know exactly what the units are that I'm working with how age is actually stored hit return I'll generate another label var and this time it'll be exam one and the label variable will be or the variable label rather will be um, student exam number one score and now put in parentheses out of 100 points and now I will hit uh, close the double parentheses hit return and let's also do the same thing now for the variable exam two but since it's so close to the label var exam one command. I'm just going to go up to the command window, put my cursor on top of the most recently um, executed command, left mouse button click, and now we see it's been copied down to the command window, but I want to change it from exam one to exam two, and also again exam one to exam two, and now I will hit return. And what we've done there now is identified or recreated 
more descriptive variable labels for each of the variable names. Now there is a limit as to how wide your labels are, you know, how many, much information, how many characters they can contain for each variable label, but you notice we can put a lot of information in there um, to, given what we've seen right now. And to just give you a very quick look as to what this looks like, I'm just going to issue the codebook command. One way we can, we can see then a uh, large amount of information for each individual variable. And now you notice as we scroll down here, actually I'll scroll back up, you notice that in the codebook command, now we see information that is the variable label that appears now across from the variable name. And that's how it's displayed if we see then the use the, com uh, the codebook command. Or if instead I use the describe command in Stata, and this is a much more compact uh, description as to or listing of what's contained in the data set. And you notice here, each variable name and associated with it are the various variable labels that we have for this data set. And at this point, I'd want to go up and save my changes. In addition to adding variable labels to a data set that you've created, what we'd also like to do when we have variables that are categorical, we also would like to indicate what each of those values for the categorical variable actually refer to. If I scroll up here where I issued the codebook command earlier in this video, you'll notice that under the variable sex, we have a value of 1 and a value of 2. Now the codebook command indicates that there are three individuals who have a value of 1 in this data set and three have a value of 2, but we don't see any indication here as to what those values actually refer to, a 1 or a 2. Now one thing that we can do is we can go ahead and we can modify the label for a variable. And in that case, what we'll do here is I'll do again label var and I'll use the label sex. In this case, I'll put in student sex in the parentheses, in the double quotation marks rather. But in parentheses, I'll have one equals female comma two equals male. So this is one way that I can actually keep record as to what the, um, the values 1 and 2 refer to in this particular case by adding it to the variable label. If I hit return, and now what I'll do is I'll do a, a describe command again, and what we'll see now is that the label for sex now has changed, the variable label has changed. Now it's not just student sex, now we see in parentheses what the values refer to. Uh, one of the things that this does illustrate is that in the event you make a mistake adding a label to a variable in terms of typing or you put in the wrong label for the wrong variable name, well we can just issue uh, another label command and that will replace the label for a particular variable name. So the label command and what we'll see stored here in the data set will be the most recently executed label variable command for that particular variable. And of course you'd want to save any changes you've made uh, to your data set. But now let's talk about how we go about, other than adding it to the variable label, how we keep a record or indicate what the variable sex refers to in terms of a 1 versus a 2. If we happen to have a variable that has a large number of possible values, a large number of categories, then just putting them all into the variable label would not really be very practical. Instead what we'll do is we'll assign value labels for each one of those values for 1 and 2. So what we'll do, it's again a label command, but this time the subcommand will be define, and now I give it a label name. What I like to do is take the variable name for the values that I'm creating the label for, and then I just throw an L onto it. Sex L for the label for the values for the variable sex here. Now space, I indicate what the first numeric value is, space, 
and in double quotations, now I put what a one refers to. A one refers to female. Double quotation. Close that quotation. Space to, space, double quote, male. Now if we happen to have other categories here, we would just continue this. Three, space, and in double quotes, whatever three refers to. Space, four, space, and in double quotes, whatever four refers to. So we would continue then this command over and over again, adding the numbers. So now if we just hit return, and let's go ahead and I'll generate a describe command again to see the list of variables here. You notice it does not appear just yet. So while I created the label sex L, that one is defined as female and two is defined as male, you notice it's not associated with the variable sex under that value label column. So what I need to do now is to say, now that I've created that value label that I call sex L, what I need to do now is attach that to or assign that to the variable sex. So that takes a second label command. Label, and the subcommand now is values, and now I put in the name of the variable, variable name, and now the name of the value that I will be assigning to that variable. Hit return. Now if I issue the describe command again, we now see under the value label option for sex, we see that sex L is the value label assigned to it. Now let's also take a look as to what this will look like now in output. So let's generate a tab command, and tab will just generate a frequency table for the variable, and I'll put in the variable sex. And now you notice here that instead of a one or a two, I see actually the value labels of female or male that are now displayed within the, um, uh, the, t the frequency table that I've created. Now you notice just above where we see female and male, we see the actual variable label there, and one equals female and, one, and two equals male is listed there. But if I didn't have that information there, I wouldn't know what one and two would mean other than by seeing the label that I have here. If you're not sure as to what is the value assigned for female, what's the value assigned for male, or for any variable that someone has already created the variable value labels for, what you can very easily do is, as I just did there, issue the tab command for that variable. It'll show then what are the labels associated with those different values, but we don't know what value is associated with female or what value is associated with male right now except for what we see in the variable label, which most people tend not to report that information in the variable label. What I can do now is type in tab sex comma no label, and you notice what it now generates is the frequency distribution, but instead of putting the label female and male, it now puts in what values are assigned to those cases, a one for female and a two for male. So now I can match then the first category that's reported in this frequency table is a value of one, and we see above that uh, the value label for that category is female. So that's one way which I can discern then that female is equal to one. Same thing I see now that two is the second category in this frequency table. Compare that to the frequency table above, which is identical except for now it shows the labels in the one above. Well, two then is the category assigned for male. And this is how we go about then adding value labels to the category, numerical categories that we see for a categorical variable in Stata.